Hi everyone, my name is Brady Keene. I am a clinical assistant professor at Keene State College and the supervisor for WorkWise NH, uh, formerly known as the OSHA State Consultation Program for the state of New Hampshire, also based out of Keene State College. Um, today, I'm gonna go over a training with you uh, from the presenter's perspective uh, on how to present on Zoom during our conference. And I, I'm just gonna start from the very beginning um, with the basics and kind of move our way through the more advanced topics, which really aren't that much more advanced. Uh, so, but I really want to start at the, the base level so that we're all on the same page. Before I really get into it, I just want to say thank you so much for volunteering your time to the conference. I know that everyone is super busy, uh, especially today with the, the pandemic going on, COVID-19, all that good stuff. Uh, I know time is very, very valuable to a lot of us. So thank you so much for the prep time and the presentation time and just volunteering in general. We really appreciate it. Uh, and we, I'm sure the attendees will appreciate it and they'll, they'll appreciate your uh, continuous improvement and your dedication to our profession. So thank you so much again for your time. Um, I'm just gonna start with the really basic stuff. Uh, and like I said, we'll move forward with the more advanced stuff. So I wanna start with the mute and stop video feature. Now, I'm not gonna mute myself or stop my video here because it will affect the recording, but if you ever at any point in time wanna stop your audio, all you have to do is click mute, this little button right here, or if you wanna stop your video, you can click this button right here. Now, that's good for uh, maybe pre-presentation, maybe you don't want people to hear or see you, or maybe you're in other uh, sessions where uh, we would ask that you mute and, and pause your, your video. Uh, other than that, you guys should be uh, having your audio and video on most of the time for the attendees to see. Um, within these buttons, there's a few more settings that I just want to talk to you about. Uh, next to the mute button, you see the carrot that's pointing up right here. This brings up your selection for microphone and speaker. So if you have multiple speakers and multiple microphones on your computer, which in my case I do, you want to select the ones that work the best. Uh, so in my case, I choose the echo uh, for the microphone and the echo for the speaker. But you can see I have a, a variety of different things to select. Choose whatever works best for you. Uh, that's fine with us. The other button that's within this carrot is the test speaker and microphone button. So I'm going to click on this and it'll walk you through a demonstration on how to test your speakers and microphone prior to your presentation. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. So you can see it walk you through the process automatically. Uh, pretty easy, pretty simple. You just want to make sure that it is working prior to your presentation. Next to the stop video button, there's also a carrot. So if you click on that carrot, you can see it brings up, uh, brings up a selection of different cameras. I have two on this, this computer, a Logitech HD camera and my integrated camera for my laptop. I use Logitech when I'm recording or when I'm presenting. You can select whichever camera works best for you. Again, we would ask if you have the higher quality one, just please select that one so that the attendees have the best uh, experience possible. Also within that carrot is the choose virtual background uh, setting. So if you click on this, it's going to bring up uh, a screen that's going to look just like this for you, except you're only going to see the bridge, the grass, space, the northern lights, and the beach. All right, so those are the standard um, selection of backgrounds that uh, Zoom offers. So if you're in a distracted environment or if you're in an environment where people are prone to walking by you, uh, anything of that nature, it is a best practice to use a, a virtual background. If you don't want to use one of these backgrounds, you can add your own and you can simply do that by selecting this little plus button here, add image, and you can select any file you want on your computer um, and it will uh, download that onto Zoom where you can select it. So I've downloaded two of my own a wall that I took a picture of and uploaded, and just some image that I found on Google of a glass room in the mountains, which is pretty cool. But I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my office. This is my uh, actual background behind me. It's not something that I downloaded. I'm just gonna exit out of here and just move on. Um, some other features that are pretty important is the chat feature. Uh, this one is more important for you for file uploads. So if you want to share your presentation or if you want to share maybe an image or a video or something that's in a file form, you can do that by clicking on this button. So you click on that button. It's going to bring up the file structures on your computer and it'll ask you what you want to upload. 
Uh, so for instance, if I want to add the quiz questions up here, I can do that. It'll upload right into the chat for people to download. Now, just keep in mind what you do download, uh, or excuse me, upload onto the chat. People can download as much as they want. It's then public uh, to the attendees in that group. So just be sure that if you're, uh, if you are putting anything up there, that it is something that can be used for the public. The other feature that I wanted to mention in chat is the two feature. So uh, it's not going to show up because I'm the host of this and I'm the only one in the Zoom meeting right now. But if you click on this, typically a drop down appears where it'll show all the attendees names along with the everyone selection. Now, if you want to send a message to everyone in the, uh, the audience, you click on everyone and you can say hello and it goes to everyone. If you want to send it to an individual, like I said, there'll be a list of individuals here you can select. You click on that individual and you send a message privately. So if you send messages privately, just make sure that they are private and they don't become public accidentally. You want to make sure that you're sending it to the right individual and not the whole group to see. So that kind of covers the chat feature. Um, your moderators will know more about the chat feature and the uses of it. but. Uh, you also might get some questions that appear in there, but your moderator should ask those questions to you. But feel free to monitor anything that comes up on this screen as well that you can answer live or after you're done presenting. The next feature and probably the most complicated feature, it's really not that complicated, is the share screen feature. So before you go ahead and share your screen, you want to open up your PowerPoint. So I'm just going to open up a PowerPoint, the first one that's in there going to open it up. Um, I'm going to go to a specific slide just for demonstration purposes and I'm going to go into my presentation mode. Now what you can't see uh, on my other display I have the actual uh, uh, presentation up. I'm just going to switch that so you all can see it. So you can see um, that the, the screen is up like I'm in presentation mode and I'm just going to bring zoom back up so that I can share my screen. Now, once I put Zoom back up, I'm going to then share my screen. You're going to click on that little green button that says Share Screen. Select the presentation view of your presentation. And before you go ahead and do that, I would ask that you select the Share Computer Sound button if you have any audio or video that will be played during your presentation. Once you do that, uh, you select that button, it will then produce the sound for the audience. If you do not select this button, it will not produce the sound. So I'm going to go ahead and share with that audio, um, that share computer sound button clicked and share my screen. Now you can see that I'm sharing. This is what the, the uh, attendees will see. Um, and you'll see now uh, I've embedded a YouTube video into my slideshow, which I highly recommend that you all do if you are going to use a video. Uh, simply just embed it into the PowerPoint and you can see if I click play, it'll start to play the sound. And this is what the audience will hear. What we've learned in Ebola outbreaks is you need to react quickly. So you can see the, the audio comes through, the video comes through. Um, it's not always going to be 100% clear, I will admit, on Zoom, but it's going to be uh, produced in a, in a pretty good format, so long as you have good Wi-Fi connection. Now, uh, some other buttons to uh, be aware of while you're presenting. Uh, you saw that little green and red button. See, I'll go down here. You see at the top of your screen here, you hover over it, and down comes a drop down with some more buttons just to uh, use. Probably the two most important for y'all are the pause share button and the annotate button. Uh, the pause share button is great if you want to just stop mid presentation and have a discussion face to face, quote unquote, uh, with your audience. So if you press that button, it's going to eliminate the uh, presentation screen from the audience. You'll still see it, but the audience does not. Uh, that way that they see you talking to them. Now, if you press resume share, it goes back into the presentation mode and they can see what's on the screen right now. It's really great if you stop, want to have a conversation, then continue on with your presentation after the fact. The next button is the annotate button. This is for the more advanced Zoomers. Um, not everyone will want to use this. I don't use it personally, but you can if you'd like. Uh, so you click on the, the annotate button, down comes this drop down. Uh, you can see it has the mouse, it has a select, so if you want to highlight something, you can write in here, hello. Um, you can change the color of, of whatever it is that you're typing to, uh, so you can go to the blue, press hello, I don't know if it's the same color, colorblind, sorry. Uh, we can go to maybe red, see it changes everything. Um, so you can choose whatever color you want, you can also draw, uh, so you can draw whatever you want on the screen. If you want to highlight something or 
uh, point something out to people. You can click on stamp, select whatever symbol you want, and you can see I can put hearts all over this. Uh, if you have specific things you want to erase, you can click this, whatever it may be, just click and drag over and erase. Or if you want to get rid of everything, uh, so I'll just draw a bunch of stuff on here so you can see it go. If you want to get rid of everything, just click on the little trash can, clear all drawings, and you're good to go. If you do use the annotate button, you want to make sure that you do clear everything prior to moving on to your next slide. And in order to move on to the next slide, you're going to have to exit out of annotate. So uh, make sure everything is clear, exit out, and you can see I'm now moving through the rest of my slideshow. Now, last but not least, the most important button maybe uh, is stop share. So at any point in time you want to stop your presentation or maybe you've ended it, you're just going to move your, butt, your mouse up here and you are going to stop your share, which brings me back to my regular Zoom window and you're having a quote unquote uh, virtual face to face with people. Um, so that is pretty much all I have for you uh, in terms of the presentation. Um, one more thing that I do want to mention is the changing of your name. So if you're logging on to Zoom and it doesn't have your full name, we would ask that you do so. You can change that. See, it says my full name down here. It might not for you. Click on participants, highlight over your name. You'll see a more button. Click on that and click rename. And you can change your name to whatever you want, nickname, full name. Um, we would just ask that it is there for attendees to actually see. Press OK and you're good to go. So that's really all I got. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email here in the chat window. My email is brady.keen at keen, same spelling, .edu. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, please, please, please feel re free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm also thinking that we'll have some uh, practice sessions that y'all might want to attend if you have questions or if you want to practice your presentation ahead of time. I believe those will come through a, an email message rather than uh, a video message such as this. Uh, but feel free if you want to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one, uh, I'm available sometimes next week, and for me that is the week of October, excuse me, uh, November 2nd. So reach out to me through email and we'll set something up. And lastly, I just want to say thank you again for your time, effort, preparation for this event. It means a lot to us. It means a lot to the profession. So thank you so much for, for doing this for us. Uh, and that is all I got. I hope you all have a good one. Stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and we'll see you during the conference.